Most of you guys know me. Um, I'll introduce some folks here that, that we're going to be working with. Steve Walls, I think everybody knows, is town manager, Kip, director of public works, Tim McCluskey is town councilman, and Miles Retallick is the guy that you guys have been working with for all of Kidwell and, and beyond. Uh, what we have is a, 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 a brief, let me give you a brief reason why we're doing it so that you have an understanding of why that's happening. The uh, uh, State Highway Administration uh, has uh, a, a limited budget, regional budget fund to repave uh, Liberty and Commerce Streets. What they're going to do is mill it down uh, and then put new asphalt down. Uh, that budget was, uh, that budget year is 2018, um, and I don't know if anybody remembers, but the last time we did this, it was right out in front of my Macron office, uh, a uh, vibratory roller went, went down the road and right behind it, water leaks started showing up. Uh, and what we decided was, rather than try to uh, repeat that experience, learn from what we did in the past, uh, go ahead and replace the water mains and the sewer lines and the water laterals and the sewer laterals to each house on Liberty and Commerce Street if the state would agree to defer that overall final pavement until after we got that work done so the work can last for a number of years. If you drive down that road now, it's all, all it really is is one big patch. So. Uh, our plan was to uh, get in as quickly as we possibly could. The council uh, authorized the funding, and uh, uh, we developed a, uh, a plan that would try to give us the least amount of disruptive time for everybody that we could possibly do. We're trying to limit the disturbance uh, in the uh, town. And um, so given, given those, those parameters and the fact that we kind of have to get in the ground fairly quickly on it, uh, we uh, developed a traffic plan that would allow the contractor to do work in the segments that he's working in without disturbing, uh, you know, without being, um, having to move every, all the vehicles out or trying to divert. If you drive down the road, you all know these manholes when you hit them. Uh, most of them are in the center of the road, some are off to the side. Uh, if they're in the center of the road, we can't bypass traffic on one way. We can't, there's not enough room because the prism, prismoidal width of our trenches is too wide. So that pushes people so far over to the curb that actually be at the sidewalk. So we can't push it to one side. The best way we could figure out how to do it was to get it off there altogether. Uh, all of the streets in both scenarios, uh, whether co Commerce uh, uh, or Liberty Street are being worked on, will be handled in basically the same way. The contractors work really well, both with you guys, I know, and with the homeowners in order to present uh, you know, enough uh, uh, warning about when activities are going to go on I think Mr. Wright's get all the phone calls in the world now is, uh, you know, trying to uh, uh, coordinate uh, the um, contractor's efforts. Uh, the plan, the plan in order to do that is to restore commerce the way it was back in 1952, or the late 40s to the early 50s, uh, which was a two-way street. Uh, if you come off of Hardy's, uh, right in front of Hardy's, the natural, the natural movement of that road always was two-way. That was because Commerce Street was the first road. Uh, Liberty Street was the afterthought. It was always there, but it was a side road, a service road to the uh, livery stable and some other stuff that was in town. We're going to create a two-way road all the way through town, uh, and coordinating this uh, with State Highway Administration, uh, they notified us that they're going to be reconstructing the North Bridge and the South Bridge uh, in the upcoming uh, season. Uh, this uh, uh, South Bridge uh, utilities relocation is supposed to schedule I believe in, in June, they have to bid, have to be prepared to bid in June the relocation of the utilities down here. That's uh, Lawrence and what we know where your shop is. They're going to be moving the power lines to the south uh, uh, over onto this side and relocating the, uh, so that they can get a crane in big enough to move the new bridge in. So there's going to be some stuff going on down there. They actually uh, are, we're meeting with them this afternoon to make sure that we coordinate what our traffic plan is with what they propose to do so that we're not, once people get in the habit of doing certain things, uh, then we would be in good shape. Uh, we get the question all the time, well, why can't we make just this part two-way and then 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 the last part two-way? And the rationale is, is that if you go ahead and get in there and you get everybody used to doing what historically they used to do, uh, then we would be able to string pipe, move uh, uh, soil, uh, uh, truck materials, rollers, all kinds of loaders and equipment that we need to get this work done much faster. Uh, these streets will be open. Uh, we're starting on, on Liberty Street from the intersection down here at Corsica Technologies. That section up there to Academy Lane will be the first section that we start on. 
Uh, the town and his uh, town fathers are going to be notifying each and in, in, individual property owner uh, in person, showing them uh, what the work is going to be, where it's going to be done. Um, one of the obviously we everybody knows the big bottlenecks that happen in town if you're coming up Water Street uh, and then trying to turn and then come down Broadway and then come across on Chesterfield. What our proposal is is to saw cut the side of Water Street, move that parking over. Create Water Street two ways, straight through, okay? So that anybody, and I know all you guys will love that one. Uh, <laughs> so that uh, if, you're, if you make the decision to get onto 213 at uh, Little Kidwell or at Kidwell and make that turn and you're going straight on through, rather than trying to avoid uh, having to make this turn here uh, onto Water Street to come up into here, you would always have that option of coming down uh, and staying on Water Street uh, and Railroad Avenue and just shooting straight across. Uh, Lawrence, you probably remember this, I don't know, but I know your, your family does, that this was always a two-way street uh, up until 1956. Up until 1956, it was a two-way street. Well, I was born in 61, so... Yeah, there you go, just missed it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we just missed it. So that was a two-way street, and so the idea is, is that when we uh, uh, are able to pass uh, vehicles, uh, particularly bus vehicles, straight through town here, uh, and, and create that as a, as a two-way scenario, <laughs> We are able to accommodate a couple of things that always seem to come up, and you guys know it better than I do, or as well as I do, and that is uh, left turns out, uh, people trying to turn left out of Edwards, okay, which stops you guys up, uh, and the backup from this light timing here over onto, uh, onto 213, or Commerce Street, uh, when you guys have the big, big uh, movements that you're making. I was in it this morning. So, Mike, is Water Street going to be two-way just for temporary? We're leaving. We're, we're, doing right, we're doing temp. We're creating Water Street two way for a couple of reasons. One is it sort of makes sense uh, from from uh, traffic relief. If we, in the course of our uh, work here, it turns out that this is a huge benefit to the congestion downtown, uh, then it may be something that the town fathers would consider uh, on a permanent basis. Yeah, but right now that's a temporary uh, uh, move in order for us to be able to. Uh, make sure that we can clear the traffic through here as quickly as possible. And it's not, it's not just bus-driven bus stuff, obviously. The uh, folks, uh, folks trying to stop traffic to turn left into, into Edwards, it, because it's so close to the intersection that people getting out have to make it, especially if they want to then turn down Water Street. Everybody knows that's, a, that's a, an issue. So we'll be working with them to create a right turn in and a right turn out scenario. Okay. The town's in the process of trying to come up with excess parking, additional parking, uh, so that our net parking number will be greater than what it is right now when we do that. Um, so when you're looking at a two-way scenario uh, for the streets, in order to accommodate you guys, what we did was we took your, at your buses, your, uh, the bus lengths, bus turning movements, tractor trailer turning movements, and move the stop bars away from the intersections, okay? So, and the, well, the police uh, department is going to be monitoring those stop bars with some vigor in the very beginning of the process <clears throat> to make sure that people don't feel like they have to keep ooching out into traffic for some reason instead of waiting for the light to turn, okay? So the traffic signal will be modified uh, at, at this point. We're going to be modifying the signals at Liberty and, uh, um, and uh, Water Street and Broadway and uh, uh, Liberty Street but we're not going to, we're going to bag them. We're not even going to leave them on as flashers. Uh, the state highway preferred that we go ahead and just create stop conditions here on both of these sections because this local traffic will be moving just as it normally does. If we're working way down here, there's no reason that people can't use Liberty Street the exact same way they've always been using Liberty Street. So our goal was to create the stop conditions here uh, and then allow that through traffic to keep moving on all conditions. Uh, we're going to reverse the, the uh, uh, parking spaces in front of the courthouse. Right now, they're kind of coming that away. They're angled in the direction of the, uh, of the uh, northbound traffic. We're going to uh, re realign them to angle them to, so we, we can keep those spaces. Uh, and we can easily do that because that's extra wide in there. That, that mm -hmm. section of road is extra wide there. Uh, the, uh, uh, what we're anticipating is about eight months, eight, nine months on each of these uh, uh, segments. Um, this is the highest part of the town, okay? Everybody kind of, I guess we know that uh, in, uh, intuitively. And therefore, uh, all this, the, the way the sanitary sewers were designed was, starting down here at Lafayette, that all runs down and goes to the south pumping station, okay? Uh, starting in the middle of town, roughly across from the bank, 
it comes down here and goes to the uh, north pumping station. This picks up here at, at a point just before, comes all the way down here and goes to the south pumping station. And this section right here comes all the way down and goes to the south pumping station, picking up little Kidwell and Kidwell. So it actually there's a natural four-phase construction that we can do. This first segment is the first phase that we're going to flip around and go this way and go work our way. We always build sanitary sewers uphill. So we'll be starting at this end, building uphill here, starting in the second phase, building up here, uh, uphill here in the third, fourth uh, month. Then when that work is completed and we have all these uh, 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 trenches and whatnot brought up to grade and compacted and ready to go, <clears throat> we were going to try to see if we could get State Highway to come in and do their milling so that we refine this street, we can go ahead and complete the street. We don't know that they're going to be able to do that. Uh, I don't know if you saw survey crews running around out here all through town. I'm sure you guys saw it because we're here forever. Yeah, those guys are actually working for the State Highway Administration under state contract to try to see if there's a way we can flatten down the crowns. Uh, if you know, most of our curbs are only this high now because the State Highway keeps paving them. And pretty soon, uh, in some areas, they're, they're not even a tenth of a foot, you know, an inch or so. So uh, what the state really wants to do, and uh, something that we've urged them to do, is to come back and actually remill that road and create a crown that gives us those gutters back so that we can keep the water in the street instead of out of it. Uh, another point of contention was the world famous uh, Drummond Lake at the corner of uh, uh, Lawyers Row and 213. Uh, Drummond's Lake is going to go away one way or another. We are determined to make sure that that project uh, gets taken care of. We'll be meeting again with State Highway Administration to firm up the details on that. Was well, that a drain issue there? Yes, it is. It's a four inch pipe that's always filled with something. Uh, that comes out of an inlet that's only about that deep. So it's a, it's a uh, historic nightmare, uh, and we can see no reason to let that persist. Okay, so, sir, go ahead. I thought something you said, you were using terminology segments, and you said eight to nine months per segment. No, no. You meant uh, eight to nine months per Four street. months. I say three months, three to four months, three to four months on each side. And, uh, and that's, uh, and that, that's uh, Commerce Street's about uh, 450, maybe 500 feet longer than Liberty Street, so it's going to be a little bit longer, but we have a blessing, at least on the sanitary side, that this has already been replaced. This, set, this segment of the sanitary sewer had already been replaced a number of years ago. I'm not sure if you guys remember that construction, but, <clears throat> but that's already been done up to here. So we have that part of it, it should equalize, and we have a good water main coming out of the water tower in the middle of town, uh, going over to Water Street, and then out railroad out of it. So that's already been taken care of. So each, each side actually has a little bit of a benefit uh, going for it right now. All right, now we'll leave this up so you guys can have it. And I told uh, uh, Margaret Ellen that we're going to go ahead and leave a full copy of the plat here for you guys, you know, if anybody needs to see it. Uh, we also have blow-ups and details and whatnot. But it's really important. You'll see one of the things you'll really see here is how funky these stop bars have to be in order to make these turning movements work. Uh, you know, as, as you know, and I think there was a bus driver training day. I happened to be out uh, watching somebody trying to make a uh, right-hand turn or a left-hand turn off of Water Street onto Commerce. Uh, yep. Well, you know that one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it wasn't going too well. So, so what we thought was, you know, that, that using, kind of using that as an example, we would, take a, uh, we would take these stop bars, move these stop bars where they would have to be, so that people who were using the road would be able to anticipate that. And if it was going to be difficult for a particular type of vehicle uh, and an alternative route could be found, that's what they would naturally do. Uh, the State Highway Administration has offered to, uh, to put signs out on the highways uh, about heavy construction, you know, in the middle of town, expect delays. Uh, and for, uh, for permit vehicles, you know, big through traffic transporters, uh, other than buses, uh, th that they would find another route, you know, and that's, that's typical state highway. They'll go ahead and work those out. We're going to have a discussion about it based on some comments that we got from the town citizens on Thursday night to see if we can, we, if we can word that up so that it, that it, uh, it doesn't connote that the town is shut for business. We're very much open for business. The, uh, uh, the idea is if we can accommodate the, the peak times when the buses come through in the, in the morning and in the afternoon and when the commuter comes through, <coughs> then we would do it that way. Now I used to live out on the other side of town. I would take the Spangard Neck down to, down to Watson Road, cut through Front Street and go out that way. Now you can't cut through Front Street, so you've got to go all the way up to Watson Road and go around. That's a very typical route that every, a lot of people take now to get to the school. 
Uh, most of the Northbrook traffic comes straight through that lake. They don't even bother coming into town, and they go to Homewood or Draper Lane coming around that route. So that's just one of those natural ways that people will find their, uh, their, their way going or use 305 uh, or uh, uh, White Marsh Road. <clears throat> so we do have some options. But then we just wanted to make you guys fully aware and let you actually look at the details of the plan and get your input because, you know, given the fact that, that we can save months, I think, Miles, you said four months out of the overall length of the time of the disturbance by doing it in this way, uh, we can put things more or less back to natural and uh, to the normal conditions and then be able to get that state highway paving and milling done because that's going to be following right on this. Uh, and uh, they, they would obviously benefit from milling a road that's already closed uh, to, to through traffic. Uh, and so we may be able to coordinate with State Highway, that's part of our discussion this afternoon, to be able to, uh, to see if we can work that so that the streets get logically done and then when you turn them over uh, uh, at the end of the deal, we have new utilities under the road all the way behind the sidewalk. We'll have a new uh, uh, sub, sub base uh, in, the, in the trenched areas and we'll have um, a new asphalt uh, that will stay for a while before we have to keep cutting it up. I know it's a pain in the butt, but we actually have, at some point, you know, we got to pull the scab off, and then uh, our thinking was that working, well, we've worked with you guys before on three different projects recently, and it's gone, uh, we thought we'd be able to coordinate pretty well with you guys to make sure as long as you had notice of when we were working in the particular area. And if you had special kids, special needs, special whatever, uh, Miles helped you guys out. He was, uh, I think, uh, worked pretty well with most of, most of you to be able to make accommodations where you need them. So in a, on a, this is not a, a, a dictatorial process. It's always been and always will be a, a, a notification communication with you and your, uh, and your, co your coordinator. Uh, so that you guys are constantly know where you're going. Congratulations on your new ride, girl. It's, well, it's pretty. <laughs> so, if we could, uh, you know, I can open it up. It, uh, did anybody <coughs> from this side want to make a comment? Did you want to uh, mention a couple suggestions that were made the other night at the meeting about buses going around banjo and turpins? Oh yeah. Just so they know there's some other. Yeah, uh, one of the options that was discussed at the meeting was to bring people down banjo. Um, to uh, to two thirteen, and then what is it going to go? Academy yeah. down to Academy, and then detour around. Ooh. I well, yeah, that was that was the suggestion that was made. For some reason or other, they thought that that would allow uh, us to be able to preserve park or keep Water Street one way, or you know, uh, our thinking was I don't know, but I I can barely make it in a, in a Honda Ridgeline. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what you guys are doing. <laughs> yeah. And I also wanted to tell you guys one really, really important thing. We know that with one-way streets, people drive in the middle of the road. Bus drivers ain't going to be driving in the middle of the road. So we have, uh, uh, Kip Matthews is uh, hiring a contractor to prune the entire Thank route, you. left and right. Okay. <laughs> we not, because because when, you, when we actually go to that two-way scenario, even though we have enough width, to create a, a little minor passageway you know, alongside the sidewalks, uh, our preference was to go ahead and clear it to the, to the edge. The other advantage is, is that this guy, even though he has one of the best operators I've ever seen uh, on an excavator, uh, needs to have a clear way through as well. Uh, we ran into a bunch of stuff on Hope Road uh, just because of that same thing, because you always move to the, that road is so darn wide, you can basically drive down the center of it two way. Micro sidewalks going to get replaced also in addition to the roofs? What's that? Sidewalks? No, not, at, not under this contract. Curbs are actually owned by the state. The states are responsible for the curbs. Uh, and uh, what we're doing is where we run into a, a, a side, there's two, two separate sidewalk projects going on. Uh, the first is uh, wherever we, if we have to move a water meter out of a sidewalk up onto a property, which our goal is to get them out of the sidewalks uh, and the sewer cleanouts if we can. So when we go, we're going to tunnel under the curbs and bring them back up the other side. If we have to tear uh, a water meter out of a sidewalk, we'll be replacing that section of sidewalk. The town council is concerned that in some areas of town, you've got some lifts and shifts in the sidewalk that are fairly unsafe. Um, and uh, even though they're normally maintained by the property owner, the uh, council has set aside some, uh, some funding to allow us to go through and find those really bad spots. Some of them you can grind down, you can mill down. You've seen that done with a, with a milling machine. They'll actually plane it, plane them off to make them passable. Some can be lifted with grout, uh, just pumped under to lift the whole slab up. 
uh, and some just plain have to be replaced. And uh, the town has asked that we go through uh, Public Works, go through and identify areas that don't have sidewalk. One of the notorious places that doesn't have sidewalk, for example, is on Chesterfield, where those two huge maple trees are right before you get to Belvedere. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no side, and there's no way to get a sidewalk on the other side of it. They've tried, and the brick walks are all torn up, yeah. that kind of thing. So we would be Definitely. looking at doing a, a bump out type scenario uh, to possibly handle that. So, yeah, the sidewalks are not part of it. Uh, the curbs, well, normally we would not want to put new sidewalk against old curb. So if we can avoid that, and we're in our discussions with State Highway, if, uh, if and when, because they have very detailed survey information now, uh, if they make a decision to go ahead and start design on replacing the curbs uh, in, and, and re-crowning and re the streets properly uh, in the next funding cycles that would occur probably 15 years from now, who knows, uh, we might be able to coordinate them because uh, that's when we would want to make sure we did the sidewalks new. And we did ask the state if they could you know, come up with the funding to do the curb now while everything's being torn up, and they said they just don't have the funding for that at this present time. So. The way the funding works is that uh, they get these tranches that are regional funds. Uh, so the state highway has regional money, District 2 up in Chestertown can control. And then some of it, when they have special projects, uh, these are governor. These are governor uh, um, uh, accelerated projects. These two bridges, the governors put them on a governor's priority list. So the funding for that is is uh, immediate, uh, and and without you know, you know a whole lot of legislative process. And then uh, uh, so that if changes have to be made down here, they'll just keep putting the money in until they get the job done. Yes, ma'am. The bridges. Yes. That will be done after one at a time. It's yes. just a question, yeah. but the thing of it is, how long are we going to be out? Because that is the main drags. We only, we've only had one meeting with the state highway right, well, actually two, but the, 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 the latest meeting, uh, just to give you a, an example of what would possibly go on, uh, that uh, two-way traffic would be maintained uh, all the way up until a certain point when they actually have to bring the bridge. They had two plans. One was to do a lane shift, build the bridge down here so that people have two-way traffic on it as it is now, and complete the one side. Uh, then this, they found out that the foundation of that bridge is not worth a damn. Apparently, there's four bridges there. There, there are four different replacement elements to that bridge since, uh, since it was first put in. And therefore, when they do the lane shift, it wouldn't be able to structurally support that work. So what their plan is now is to actually close the uh, 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 bridge, uh, this is their no plan, sir. as we know, no just sir. close it for a weekend, four weekends, and, uh, and leave it open during the day just as best they can, but they're having the passage so that they, that would become a weekend work. There was another proposal on the north end to build a bridge <laughs> over top of the existing bridge uh, and then rebuild the bridge under that new bridge, okay, so that you would have traffic continually flowing. That won't work because the uh, touchdown on it ends up past Hardy's uh, and it would really mess up the entrances into Hardy's restaurant. So they had to change that plan. So it's, it's in flux right now, but, the, but they understand that whatever they can do in coordination with what we're doing now, because their bid starts in June, June 6th. Uh, by June 6th, we hope to be working our way out of that area, okay? They'll be replacing the utilities under the bridge. So we'll end up with new water and sewer utilities under uh, under that bridge. <coughs> this bridge up here, I believe, already has <coughs> new utilities. So, uh, so that's going to be uh, another, you know, function. Uh, and my understanding is they were going to try to do that over the weekend. What they're really talking about now is building the bridge down here on the, on the uh, old Sandy Bottom side uh, and then flipping and then just sliding it, lifting it and actually sliding it into place. <coughs> that's going to be an interesting time. I'll go down and watch that. <laughs> that's going to be something. But anyway, that was the, that's the latest plan. Uh, state has, has informational meetings, and they have brought us up to speed, uh, and we'll have make sure that Public Works, when we hear more uh, affirmative information, we get the information from the state so we can put it on our website, and you guys can be notified about it when it happens, because a lot of it's going to depend on what their final engineering looks like. So even though Liberty is going to be closed and Commerce is going to be two-way, what about the, the crossovers? Are they going to, at open. some point, they're going to have to be... Uh, close. They will when you get to them, yeah, when we actually have to do the utility work in them. Uh, and uh, we're, we're obligated, because this is a state highway, everything that we do during the day has to be closed up at night. You know, we, we have to put a plate over it, 
uh, or fill the trench up uh, to the full compaction. So when we have, if we're working, let's say, in here, then this would be open, you see. So we're going to be trying to sequence that work. We want to try to avoid night work in the residential areas because it, it turned out we had to do it down here when we did the beginning part of Kidwell. I don't know if you're aware, that work was done at night. Uh, and uh, uh, it was pretty disruptive to the residents uh, uh, during that process. Of course, we did also that uh, the first all the way down to almost till uh, Queen Anne uh, Court, Queen Anne Circle, uh, was concrete road under there we had to take out, which was another annoyance. We don't know what we're going to find under here. I can pretty well guarantee there's going to be concrete under there. <laughs> yeah, so it's just one of those things, you know, <laughs> that we have to do. <laughs> yeah. So uh, well, what I invite you to do, I have the blow-ups of this over here, and we can lay them out if you guys want to take a look at them. And like I say, we'll make them available to the to the board uh, and to the traffic uh, uh, coordinator, so that you guys can uh, if, can always have available. If we have to make a right on um, the main drag and make a right, are they going to be back far enough that we can make our turn? Make a right onto where? Commerce. Yes. If you're on coming from where? From water. And then make a right. Yeah, yes. that's what he was. Yeah, about. yeah, that's yes. way back here. That yeah, see those okay. stop right now. Just there's no stop sure. bar there. That stop stop bar is way back past the first section of the building of the bank, uh, and there's no parking there. There's no parking on this side. So we pulled all those stop bars all the way back. Yeah, that's a tough one because I've seen you actually come out and uh, get to get realigned to come back in. Yeah. You know, most most drivers do it before you get well before the uh, uh, the ATM. Yeah. You know. Uh, another thing, so I think, Lawrence, you had a comment about that damn mailbox over here on Liberty Street. We, we talked about that, and we said there's no reason we can't have it. As, you know the one we're talking oh, about? Yeah, yeah. 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 The way yeah. We will, where the we guy will, stands out there right in the middle of the road. Yeah, yeah we will make arrangements to relocate that exactly. mailbox. Thank you. Yeah, that was something that Lawrence had brought up at our previous meeting when we were looking to do Kidwell. We yeah. thought that would be a great thing to do. Just, just take care of it, and that's why... Uh, we have some time now before we try to make this shift. We, we hope to be able to make the shift all in one kind of one fairly smooth movement, so that so that everybody is on track and has a starting date. And also, if you come out of Banjo to make the right, like some of the residents suggested, there's going to have to be a big stop bar back there too. Yeah, yeah, that's. I'm, uh, we, we're not really. Yeah, yeah. Half of that, half of that oncoming traffic, they've got to yeah. stop for us. Yeah, they had, well, and yeah, you can see right now that you you've got traffic going both ways. We take yeah, that's why these that's why these yeah. preferred cross throughs yes. were uh, were proposed so that that does not become uh, yeah, a route that you would take. We wouldn't be able to do that unless there was a big enough stop. They're not going to right. stop. They're not going to stop. Yeah. No. Yeah, and the state highway being a, being a state highway uh, puts us under some constraints about what we can do. We know we can work in a town street like Water Street and, and all these others. Uh, that's not we, we we recognized that was going to be a problem, but because it was brought up in the public meeting, we thought we ought to at least mention it to you guys, and I know you, you've you had Maybe trouble with that Maybe they should get in a school bus and then they'll change their mind. <laughs> <laughs> right in the school you bus, know, when, yeah. The yes. warehouse, when they were working with that road there, yes. this is just a suggestion, it's probably way out there, but to me it's common sense. To have that, when we have to come out and put our nose and then have to come straight back up, these guys are not going to stop. But if they had only during, uh, during school hours, only during school hours that they could have some kind of stop sign just enough I mean some way somehow get them to stop right we talked about that I'm glad you mentioned that because uh, we there's a whole variety of, of, of materials we can use now a lot of times you'll see an arrow or a, or a flashing light mm -hmm. that comes to the stop stop bar uh, you know just a, and we talked that we said we would definitely probably go with that uh, on the uh, on, on those intersections because you're right that People don't honor them, and when they don't honor them, they either have to back up the traffic in order to clear you, or just stand up there looking stupid until the light changes. And most people it also could lock us in from behind. And exactly. That's why. That's why those stop bars are being moved back. We also have uh, police authority. Uh, uh, the chief uh, has asking. got some new folks, and he's go ahead, chief. Uh, you you can no, tell. I got us a question what before you get to him. Yeah. Oh yeah. During, you said something about movement during like, the hours, like when the schools are changing in the morning and the afternoon to get the bus traffic through. Mm -hmm. Since it's a state project, the town's not getting any money for extra police, are they? Well, the issue is uh, what we're doing here, this isn't, this is not part of the state park project. But no, I understand that, so you're not getting any help with your... Yeah, and, and we had talked about 
on some other issues as well, um, and Mike had already mentioned it, that we're looking at, you know, to try and uh, at least initially uh, enforce that stop bar around that controlled intersection, which is Water Street and Commerce. Um, I had heard the comment regarding um, Turpin and banjoing. To me, that's a non-starter, and I've talked to those folks that brought that up, because what would happen is, mm. just like you said, you get to mm -hmm. that stop sign, that's through traffic there. They're not going to yeah, stop there. Now you've got to go in both ways. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, so prim primarily, um, your, your major movements, I'd like to see it at that light. Yeah. And we're going to try and force those stop bars and keep people back. And we're taking some parking away as well on Commerce um, to give you room to swing. And um, we, we believe yeah. that's the, yeah. the best way to do it. So and you have increasing the time light yeah. travel for the lights, for the buses to get yeah. through? Yeah, I was going to say, go get to that. Yeah, we have a, a private contractor that's going to be working with the State Highway Administration <laughs> to get the timing okay, of these good. lights working. And, uh, and when, uh, what I noticed when we were doing Broadway, uh, that, that's a lot of, how many did you have in one day? In one, in one, it's like 60 or something. Buses. It was more than that. <laughs> <laughs> in the yeah. whole day, by the time you guys got done, I think I counted like 98. <laughs> okay, so because of that, that that's, that's travels, yeah. but, you know, kind of traveling both ways. Uh, you know, we had made a, a, a discussion about, uh, you know, how to time the lights and how to make the, uh, make the pass-throughs uh, viable because it's a stack up that is, way back you know and if we can get all of it pushed through you know th th this could go you know like crack through a goose if we time it right and i think that's the the, the game plan is to go ahead and try to work that out with the private con light contractor and with uh, with our police department and with the state highway administration to move those lines through on those real peak moments because there are times when they just get all sandwiched up and you may find it practical right now you probably even try to space it out somehow in your own minds so that you don't get hung up in that trying to make that left turn onto Broadway, uh, hanging out uh, onto uh, Commerce Street, you know, so that because you know you're probably all used to the timing on on Broadway now, right? Or at least yeah, you we know, just sit on Commerce and wait. Yeah, yeah. sit yeah. on Commerce and wait. wait. And all that does is it's just Broadway obviously it just pushes Broadway everything back. Broadway traffic, they'll come over that white line yeah. right straight there. Broadway, they do, and yeah, and that, that Broadway traffic is that I, Chief. I'd say that's going to be one of your one you of know, your big ones. As yeah. Mike said, though. Um, the plan right now is to bag the lights on Liberty. So if you're on water, you're going to have the right straight, way, straight yeah, through. Yeah, straight through. Okay. And, and same way on Broadway. Yes, same way on Broadway. And then if we're working in any of those intersections, at the end, you may have to shift right. it. It's oh, just going to be really predominantly residential traffic off. Right. And you should be able to get east-west should be e much easier than it is now, you know, right. east-west traffic. And our goal when we're working, if we're working down in here, I live on South Liberty Street, and uh, you know I'll be going home the way I always go home. You know, it's not we're, we're not uh, uh, cl we're closing the street to the through traffic in order for, to facilitate this and just do it in one deal. And then when we flip it over and make Liberty two way, uh, we'll have the we'll have the same benefits of having Water Street being two way. We'll just reverse the bagging. Okay, so uh, we'll, we have time. Uh, to redevelop the second, uh, the second uh, or the flip of this onto Liberty Street, uh, and then you'll see a new plan when we get ready to do the uh, when we get ready to do the changeup. One of the things that we're really we're concerned about was a lot of folks. When you let, let's use Turpins because we've been kind of picking on that. You come out on Turpins Lane, uh, nobody looks right. Uh, you say, uh, I've lived here for a long time. If you grew up here, you're, you're not going to look right. So we have an obligation to go out there and put these two way big two-way signs yeah. uh, up for people, not just, you know, rookies to Centerville, but all of us old-timers who just go to it, and we just naturally look, you know, we look up the street, and you know, we've always done it that way. So there's going to be, a, you know, a, a lot of new signage uh, that you all can expect to see out there as well. So we're going to bag, bag the old signs, uh, get the new signs up, bag them until we're ready to make the shift, then just flip them, bag the other ones, and everything should go, we hope, uh, relatively smoothly with a massive police presence. <laughs> It was all well. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Any other questions? So on January third, what happened? January third, at least, is, to, is our is our switchover date. Uh, on January third, we will be uh, uh, making oh, during the night on that. We'll be switching the, the bags, getting everything, getting the lights ready to to they'll already be timed or, or at least tentatively timed. 
Uh, the fellow that's going to be working with the State Highway Administration from Hanover lives over here on the Eastern Shore, and he's done <coughs> the timing before. He knows exactly what to expect. And so Bob, I assume Bob will probably be on that, uh, don't you, Kip, uh, uh, to help with that switchover. Uh, Yes. Yeah, we've asked, yeah. Uh, be, because he knows. He's already worked that intersection with you guys and watched it and knows it really well. So that's when the switchover would happen. Uh, in advance of that, we have to black out uh, uh, parking lines. Uh, we're going to move the blackout of the existing uh, parking lines on Commerce Street until uh, as close to the third as we can. So people don't have the confusion that there's no parking there, you know, even though we haven't made the switchover, okay? So we have to black out those lines, and then we have to stripe in the new center lines. Uh, the new center line uh, will be a double line, okay, just like uh, you would expect to see on Hope Road or any of them, a double, double yellow line. And then uh, uh, where there is parking to remain, uh, we'll go ahead and make the Department of Public Works or the uh, striping contractor will make those. This is a, a striping job that can be done fairly quickly. Oh, uh, I forgot to mention, down here at uh, the intersection, uh, uh, Hope Road, uh, I mean Liberty Street is going to be coming down and actually turning, instead of going looping around behind uh, the Sitco station, they're actually going out and we're going to come down perpendicular to the traffic, uh, moving it down to the, uh, across from the Millstream Park entrance, okay, so that we can actually see, you can actually see what's going on there. Um, a lot of you guys gas up down here, or get diesels and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Uh, if you, that's a true, true scenario. The idea uh, being that when we get, you know, trying to keep that as much, uh, as safe as we can, so that people aren't looking this way with traffic coming, you know, against them. Uh, we've got uh, uh, tear out the island down here at Little Kidwell. That's not going to work for anybody. That's going to be a piece of work that's done in one of the first phases of the contractor's work. Uh, that island there, there's a discussion of huh? this week. This week, yeah. there was a discussion about taking out the island on Riverview. Uh, we're not sure whether that's going to happen or not. That's something that's still up for discussion. That's a town issue. Uh, if you guys have a preference on it, uh, we'd love to hear it. Uh, that little pork chop that sticks out there that keeps it go from going two ways there, because I know a lot of you guys shoot the curl. You know, you go straight out, and now when you come down, you'll actually be going off across, uh, you know, down the other uh, part of Commerce Street out. Um, and if you still wanted to come out there, up until the point where we're actually doing this work, uh, we're keeping that uh, uh, option available. So the main thing you can see the purpose is the way we've divided the project out is to allow us to be able to move as quickly as we can with the utilities. You guys got any questions? Anybody got questions? Well, my question is what I just asked you. My concern is now coming up, Cody here and I are the ones that mainly come through commerce. Uh -huh. we, we're going to have to pick kids up and I'm also uh -huh. now probably going to have to pick my Liberty Street ones over there in commerce. We got two way traffic. And the way that traffic gets backed up, now we're going to have to keep stopping to pick these kids up. What's that going to do to the traffic? I don't know that there's any reason you can't pick Liberty up off of Liberty, uh, just as you always have, until, until we're working okay. in those sections. It's like, kind of like down on, on Kidwell. You know, we're working in that one section between there and Happy Lady Lane, we, you know, where, where we had to close that section while we're working there. Right. Uh, and when the kids would go up and get to the pickup, uh, you know, we, we were able to uh, coordinate with a contractor to allow you. You guys came through pretty regular, didn't it? Mm -hmm. We had school some, buses. So we had them down to the end. They had them go right to the end of the street, so nobody yeah. had to come down. Through. Yeah, if so, you're working in that so section. So you're saying that right. even though we'll it's going to be closed to uh, community yeah. traffic, you're still going to allow buses come through if the road is not disturbed. Correct. That's right. Yep. The, the buses and the com and the residents. Emergency are still vehicles. Be able to do you know all of that. Their everyday thing. residents. Yep. Just residents, like we yeah. And, and it's we, not we, as bad yeah. because right. now we're not ripping the whole street. Up. <laughs> yeah, that's the other thing. Everybody was concerned about how long it was going to take, but that street had was new from you know uh, eight and a half feet, nine, ten feet in the ground all the way up to the top. This we're working only on the utilities, so it's going to go a relatively quicker. Yeah. Miles, are, are you going to have, say, two locations going at the same time, or are you just going to be pretty much focused on the bottom end of town and working your way up? And then We're going to try to focus in those areas to get the water and the sewer complete, so when we do move to the next area, you know, that, that first section, like right the north go. section right. on Liberty, it'll be open again, right. and we'll be on the other end. So that way we're trying to concentrate all our efforts in one small area 
instead of getting all spread out. And the thing is, we're running water and sewer parallel, so we've got to do the uh, sewer first and the water second because the sewer needs a grade and the water doesn't. So, so we're going to run that. Uh, we're going to run that sewer lines up and then run that water line up right alongside it. And uh, we hope, well, I believe, the plan is to replace uh, in kind where it is so that we're not opening up anything other than what was already there you know, as we go by with the utility. But yeah, it's, it, it, in the long run, it's better to do it that way and then have that whole thing almost permanently open as we move to the next phases than to have to stop after the sewer, start the sewer crew on the other end of town, start the water end, you know, and then you're, you're basically taking two phases and created four phases out of it. So that's why we're gonna run them simultaneously. And that's why we went with this scenario because it seemed to make more sense and I think we could get everything done quicker and get out of everybody's way with less impact, you know, and then that way we we'll won't. Well, I do have to say it's wonderful working with you. You too, you, thank you. You thank are you. wonderful yeah. to each one of us. Well, and I appreciate everything that's, you that guys. Was, that's you good take to hear. care of our kids. I'm really, yeah, you take care of the kids. <laughs> so <laughs> good with it. Yeah. Is the width of commerce and liberty roughly the same? Roughly. So yeah, what, at, at what parts, size lanes are parts, we going to have? Uh, those will be, uh, we had, I think they're striping them at 11, mm -hmm. but there's actually could be 12. We, we're, if we don't have... Uh, allow parking on those roads, we can make it whatever we want. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, the main fun. goal, the main goal was to get a center line established, because right now you don't have one on either of those that streets. That parking's the killer. Yeah, and that, the parking would be, uh, that's, the, that's the objective uh, when you have the two-way scenario. It's almost like, we did, it, you almost end up with a, a, a little bit of excess on mm -hmm. both sides of the street, mm -hmm. except when you get to these hairy intersections. Uh, one of the things, like, you know, well, you brought that point up, and I think it was a good one. If you get up and you look close at this or at the blow-up drawings, when you come to a street a intersection like uh, uh, Academy mm -hmm. or Turpin's Lane, uh, 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 Fayette, uh, the alley, uh, Church Alley, yeah. you'll see you'll see where they bend the the center lines down. Okay, all the thing moves away from it. So, for example, uh, when you're when we're if you're coming down here to uh, uh, Academy Lane. You can, if you look at the drawing, you'll see that it's pushed. That it, we're pushing that down and around it this way so that you end up with more turning movement onto those streets than you would have uh, a normal, under a normal striping. It shows up a little more uh, uh, radically in the blow-up plans that I have over there. It won't be such a sharp turn. Yeah, it won't be such a sharp turn. So instead of coming in perpendicular then doing a 90, mm -hmm. they actually are working it around so that you have more swing room to get up the, get up the road. Mm -hmm. So that's part of the striping plan that we've already sent off to the professionals uh, striping company. Has there been a thought process of painting large arrows on the road so you know which direction people should be going on? Because I see some people getting confused <laughs> that it being a two-lane road, you know, going the same direction. So whether, whether there yeah. should, should be some, you know, those little plastic markers on, on the Yeah, we actually, lane. actually, uh, if you look at the blow-up plans, you'll see there's a ton of barrels on this job. You know, there's all kinds of signals and whatever. We have uh, 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 sign, big, uh, you know, two-way directional signs at, at every intersection. Uh, and I think a lot of it's just got to get into the, uh, out of the memory, you know, of, these, uh, of it being one-way streets and get used to driving it on the, in the two-way scenario. <laughs> but if you really look at it, uh, everything that you do out here is going to be what you do in there, you know. Everything that's on both ends of town because it's two way everywhere else. Yeah. When are you guys readjusting your plan after this thing gets open and going? Like, if everything's smooth, it's good. But if not, how long would you be entertaining suggestions to change up? If you guys, if you guys run into a problem, we'd like to hear about it immediately. Give me you know, a get together. Yeah. 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 I mean, you're gonna. I'm not saying you're not gonna have problems. I'm sure you are. But uh, but but I believe. But we thought that the benefits oh, yeah. far outweigh the, uh, the the debits in this case. So if you, yeah, if you run into an intersection that's a particularly weird one, or if you if the trees aren't far enough back or whatever, uh, please call it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know this is a Mansfield approach, it's chainsaw, chainsaw, right? Now go ahead and uh, and make sure that you call us right away. The Department of Public Works. My uh, my number is listed in the in the work as well as a project manager. So if you have uh, specific issues that you that you always know, you can talk to Miles. Those that have worked with him, I think if you ever had a problem. Uh, you know, you just go right up to him and he'll figure out a way. Uh, he normally would call me. If we have any issues, we've been able to solve every one of them. So uh, we just, uh, we know it's going to be a little bit of a, um, a little 
bit hairy when we make the changeover, but we're hoping that um, you know, with the cooperation of the citizens and the businesses, we can make this as painless as possible and get this necessary work done. Anybody have you have anything you want to add, Tim, or uh, anybody? Yeah, Any other questions? You know yeah. where to go. Whatever ideas you guys have, don't hold on to them. Yeah. Good, good, bad, or indifferent. You know. Yeah, uh, we'll talk it through. We're open. So yeah, if you and have any, I, ideas, I think please. that's the benefit of having you know, like yeah. you say, having worked uh, with uh, with Miles on the previous project, uh, we'll always find a way. Yeah, yeah let us know. I think they'll buy the field across from the high school, put those two elementaries out there. We'll be all right. Oh, that's a good thought. That's a good thought. All for you. Yeah. 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 That would make it convenient, wouldn't it? Zip, zip, be yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah, well, we're hoping that a straight shot will uh, will will help out a lot, and then, yeah. and timing yeah. that light. Yeah. If somebody has to wait at that light so that those buses, all of them, could clear in a string, uh, and just shoot them through the light. You know, you don't have to worry about the other end of it. Uh, that's that's the kind of timing that we're looking for, and that inconvenience <coughs> in that short haul will save no end of inconvenience when you get stacked up on 213, like you were talking about waiting, because you know, yeah. what else are you going to do? And and in that case, you're going to be holding up two lanes of traffic. So you know, it's, it's, it just makes it makes sense to us anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay, really appreciate uh, the fact that you guys have worked with us so well on these other projects on Brown Street and on uh, and on Kidwell. I hope you like them. You know, because because uh, we did some things, we took like some trees now. down, like them now. Yeah, right. we took some trees down, uh, and we moved some shrubbery back out of the way. I don't know if you noticed, but we took a lot of those uh, that I thought you guys probably wanted to take out yourself. Um, and uh, we hope that, uh, but when we start this project and we start trimming, you guys can take a look at it before the shift over. Uh, and if you see areas that you see, like like the uh, 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 Shanab mailbox that we're now getting rid of, you know, moving, uh, that we'll be able to solve individual problems like that before they come. <coughs> okay? Really appreciate it. It's a great crowd. Good to have you back. And uh, uh, like I say, we're, we're open for business. In, in terms of taking our islands, I'd like you guys to think about the one on the corner of Tillman and Kidwell. <laughs> that one uh, can kind of... Oh, yeah. I, I know you engineers got to do your jobs, uh, Michael, mm -hmm. but sometimes those can... They, they hurt us. Terrible create problems for for the bus drivers yeah that was hand are you talking about the new one yeah yeah that's a, that was a hand real real problem with a handicap access uh and uh because the utility pole and the down guy were sitting where they were sitting and that was the uh the goal uh one of the councilmen thought that if we uh and, and i think it was because he put a bump out at that one end that's the only one that's on the street by the way on all the rest of the striping it's going to be done with directional striping there's not going to be any other efforts to control or slow down that traffic going through there it was a speed issue uh, for the for some of the folks up there. Just so you know, I didn't want to build it. No, none of us. <laughs> none of us wanted to build it. Yeah, okay. none of us wanted to build it. But we did. You'll see it kind of blends back in with a. We got around a, a maple tree. We made some accommodations on that other side, uh, on the other side of the street, on the other side of Tillman too, to try to get that that center line moves over. Okay, Margaret Ellen? Well, certainly all the information uh, that you've uh, given us and that we've been communicating um, together for quite a while, you know, with right. this, and we'll be on, it'll be ongoing. And I just certainly want all the bus drivers to know, you know, call them, call me, just so we, you know, if there's any problems that we can address them together. And if we have to make adjustments with the routes, you know, that'll be no problem. You know, we'll just uh, do what we've done in the past yeah. and just make sure we inform parents and uh, you know, work together. In the end, it'll be a good um, yeah. result and uh, certainly appreciate the help of everyone here um, today in order to make everyone understand, you know, just where the project is going. Thank you all for coming out. Yeah, thank you, Margaret. Really appreciate it. Thank you.